Throughout history, there have been people who have committed some of the most heinous crimes fathomable. For those crimes, they have been convicted and sentenced to death. Welcome to Death Row Executions, where we take a look into the lives of society's worst offenders. And now, your host, Air. Yeah, she told me she actually forgives Zagorski for killing her husband, and she sent a letter to Governor Haslam asking him to spare his life. But more than anything, she says that she wants this all to be over so she can try to move on. I've dealt, dealt with it for 35 years, and I will be glad when it's over. I just don't care anything about watching that. That's nothing that I, that I care to watch. What's more inhumane than the way he killed Dale and Jimmy? He shot them twice in the stomach and then went down there and slit their throats. Now come on, how much more cruel and inhumane is that? Edmund Zagorski was born on December 27, 1954 in Michigan. He grew up in a poor family and had a hard time in school due to learning disabilities and not receiving the proper help. He dropped out of school at an early age and with no formal education began a life of crime. It was April 5, 1983, and Edmund was now 29 years old. Dressed in full camo and carrying survival gear that included a knife and a rifle, he made his way to a trout farm in Hickman County, Tennessee. Edmund knew the manager of the farm, Jimmy Blackwell, who allowed him to stay, and on that day, he met a man named John Dodson and his wife, Marcia. He told them that he was a mercenary who worked in South America making over $100 a day. He continued to show off and informed John that he knew big time drug dealers who would be willing to sell him a large amount of marijuana. Another man by the name of Jimmy Porter was included in on the deal and Edmund told them that they could purchase 200 pounds of marijuana for $150 per pound. Excited by the possibility of being in possession of such a large quantity of marijuana, they ended up agreeing to 200 pounds for $23,000. For this deal, Jimmy was supposed to give Edmund $10,000. Two days before their scheduled deal, a small aircraft flew over the trout farm and Edmund let John know that the shipment was in the woods and they would be meeting with a man named Dave. He told John to be prepared and bring a gun just in case. It was now April 23rd. John and Jimmy left with a bank bag full of money along with a pistol. They were to meet Edmund at a specific location at 6 p.m. and they had left at around 4.30 p.m. because the meetup location was in walking distance. Edmund left separately and at about 5.30 p.m. multiple people at the trout farm heard gunshots, which were a normal occurrence, so no one suspected anything bad. After that, the men were never seen again. Edmund left to Ohio to stay with his friend Rodney and got there by driving John's truck. It wasn't until May 6th, 1983, when someone found the bodies of John and Jimmy. Their bodies were decomposed, but an autopsy was able to determine that they were both shot in the chest and abdomen. Along with being shot, their necks were sliced as well. Near the bodies, there was a military snake bite kit, a survival kit, a knife, and a case for glasses that belonged to Edmund. He had stolen the men's cash and pistol before his escape to Ohio. While in Ohio, Edmund purchased horses, a pickup truck, a motorcycle, weapons, and survival gear with the stolen cash. His friend Raymond asked him how he had so much money and he went with the story of him being a mercenary. It wasn't until May 26, 1983, authorities in Ohio spotted Edmund. They were unable to get him to calmly surrender and a shootout ensued. After crashing into a police car and shooting a deputy five times, Edmund was finally apprehended. He was wearing a bulletproof vest and he had $9,000 in cash on him. While being questioned by detectives, Edmund told multiple stories. One of these stories was that he was told to be a lookout and took the truck and thought nothing of it because it was normal to trade cars and drug deals. He said he was not the last person to see Jimmy or John. In another story, he said he was hired to kill the victims 
but at the end had a change of heart and killed them on accident. After his 1984 trial, he was ultimately found guilty of first-degree murder charges of John Dodson and Jimmy Porter and sentenced to death by method of electrocution. He was sent to Riverbend Maximum Security Prison in Nashville, Tennessee. Edmund initially had an execution date set for October 11, 2018, and he refused a last meal. He was able to get a stay seven minutes before his scheduled execution, and his new date was set for November 1, 2018. For this new execution date, he decided to request a last meal, and he ate pickled ham hocks and pigtails. After being strapped in, he said his final words, let's rock, and he was pronounced dead at 7.26 p.m. He was executed after 34 years of being on death row and after filing 22 appeals. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Death Row Executions, and before you go, I would like for you guys to check out one of my subscribers' fairly new channel. The channel is a true crime podcast hosted by Kimberly. I think she is very raw and real, so I will leave a link to her channel in a pinned comment. Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Kimberly Carroll, your host of Beyond Evil, a true crime podcast. Now, with that being said, you're like, she's a podcast. What's she doing over here? Well, there's so many other podcasters that bring you all these fantastic visuals of the case and all this good stuff. That's not what you're going to get here. What you're going to get here is the very opinionated version of the very politically correct podcast. Also, I would like to give a shout out to Cheryl and Gail. Thank you too for becoming patrons on my Patreon.